In light of my last video in which we discussed reparations and the lack of support and continuous disrespect that Joe Biden shows towards it, it recently dawned on me that Joe Biden is not the first presidential candidate to have made an attempt to crowbar Native Americans into a reparations bill that should solely be for the descendants of American slavery. The first one to do that was Elizabeth Warren earlier last year. And in my old video series, Not For Real, I discussed in great detail why Elizabeth Warren did what she did, and it was primarily due to the fact that she herself is a $5 Indian. And in that video, I break down what a $5 Indian is, how they came to be, and the significance of a presidential candidate attempting to get reparations for Native Americans. Because when they're doing that, they're actually making an attempt to funnel more funds into the hands of the dominant white society. So with all that being said, what I wanted to do today is reintroduce that video that I made last year. So without further ado, I'd like to reintroduce to you Elizabeth Warren, Reparations and the $5 Indians, ADOS, beware. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Tony DeLarmy. Thanks for tuning into a brand new episode of Not For Real. And on today's episode, what I wanted to talk about is Elizabeth Warren's recent CNN town hall that she had, in which of course she spoke on reparations. And the reason I wanna speak on that is this, because it highlights the, the necessity and the seriousness behind the terms ADOS, American Descendant of Slaves, and the way in which that terminology is necessary when describing black people as American Descendant of Slaves. It's necessary in order to box out other groups from attempting to crowbar themselves into the discussion and into policies and legislations that should be exclusively for American descendant of slaves. Now, in the town hall meeting, there was an elderly woman, an elderly black woman that stood up and she didn't even ask about reparations. What she asked, her question that she asked was how will you be issuing a national apology? And that's for slavery. And that's something that I really hate with a passion. I, I can't stand that. You can keep your apologies. I don't care about an apology. Hold that. Where are those reparations at? That's what I want to know. Where are those reparations at? Keep your apology. But when asked about the national apology, Elizabeth Warren responded with the topic of reparations. And when she finished, the host of the town hall, or the moderator, even though that's not a debate, but the host of the town hall then did something very, very slick. And he crowbarred Native Americans into the conversation. And he crowbarred Native Americans into the reparations conversation by way of piggybacking off of the fact that Elizabeth Warren has consistently made efforts to crowbar Native Americans into the reparations conversation. She's someone who's been on the record multiple times by always stating whenever reparations comes up, yes, I'm in favor of looking into reparations for American descendant of slaves and Native Americans. The host cleverly crowbarred that into the conversation. And then upon crowbarring that into the conversation, CNN then puts at the bottom of the screen, and I'll leave the link in the description below so you can watch the full video of what I'm talking about. It's only three minutes long. But CNN then, in a very clever fashion, what they do is that they put the question that was asked on the bottom in case you missed it. And the question that they put on the bottom said, do you support direct financial reparations to the descendant of slaves and Native Americans? Nobody asked any questions about Native Americans. That elderly black woman said nothing about Native Americans. Yet and still, CNN and the host crowbarred Native Americans into the conversation, which is something that Elizabeth Warren has also consistently done outside of the CNN town hall whenever asked about reparations. Now, why is this important to note? You see, it's, it's deeper than just the benign neglect policy that most of us all know about, or we should all know. Benign neglect meaning that all politicians, politicians, po excuse me, politicians under no circumstances are to acknowledge or promise any type of policy or legislation that would be specifically for black people. 
you must always speak in vague, broad terms and put them in minority or people of color policies, but never anything that is specifically for black people. It's so much deeper than that once you know and understand history. And now let's get into that. And it's all gonna tie in at the end. You see, what a lot of people don't know about is the term $5 Indian. Now, what's a $5 Indian? A $5 Indian, in essence, are white people. They're white people who claim to have Native American heritage and Native American blood. They do not classify themselves as being white in the census report or any other paperwork that they have to fill out in which they have to identify themselves. These white people identify themselves as full-blown Native Americans. Now, some of you may be thinking to yourself, how is that even possible that you being white can classify yourself as Native American on your paperwork? Well, I'll tell you how that's possible. But in order for me to tell you how that's possible, we got to go back a couple years, 18, 1887 to be exact. You see, in 1887, a piece of legislation was passed known as the Dawes Act. And I'm going to read the description of what that is here. And what the Dawes Act was is that it authorized the President of the United States to survey Native American tribal land and to divide it into allotments for an individual Native American. Now, what's meant by allotments are land allotments, to be more specific, but let's carry on. The objectives of the Dawes Act were to abolish tribal and communal land ownership of the tribes into individual land ownership rights in order to transfer lands under Native American control to white settlers and stimulate assimilation of them into mainstream American society and thereby lift individual Native Americans out of poverty. Now, in order for Native Americans to qualify for these land allotments that would be given to them by ways of the Dawes Act, they had to register under the Dawes Rolls. And what the Dawes Rolls were is essentially a census report that took account of all Native Americans throughout the country. Now, the problem is this. While the Dawes Rolls were being conducted, white settlers were made aware of the Dawes Act and the necessity to be registered under the Dawes Rolls and were able to bribe themselves onto the Dawes Rolls by paying off those within the Dawes Commission. And specifically, they would pay them $5 and that became the thing to do. If you go to the Dawes Commission office and you pay these men $5, they will now register you, despite the fact that you're white, they would register you as Native Americans. Now let's really put that into context in terms of what $5 meant back in the 1890s because by the time the Dawes Rolls was being conducted it was 1893 at this point. Now let's look at what $5, what $5 actually meant back then. Now $5 in the 1890s was the equivalent to receiving $131.87 today. Now on the surface that might not seem like a lot of money but if you put yourself back in time in the 1890s, $131 is a lot of money, given the fact that five pounds of flour cost 14 cents, a pound of steak cost 12 cents, a pound of bacon cost 12 cents, a pound of butter cost 25 cents, a dozen eggs cost 20 cents, half gallon of milk cost 13 cents, a 10 pound bag of potatoes cost 16 cents, and a five pound bag of sugar cost 34 cents. So now when you put this in perspective to that period of time, $131 was a lot of money, or excuse me, $5 was a lot of money. That's a lot of money. You could do a lot with a dollar back in the 1890s. And that's what white people were doing in order to get onto the Dawes Rolls. Now by doing this, these former white settlers, and I say former white settlers tongue in cheek, these former white settlers were now able to claim themselves to be Native Americans and take advantage of these land allotments that were supposed to specifically be for Native Americans by way of the Dawes Act. And what you don't understand here now is that these so-called Native Americans are still here in existence today. And one of them happens to be Elizabeth Warren. 
Now here is a copy of Elizabeth Warren's Texas Bar Registration Card that she filled out in 1986, in which you can clearly see that she registered her race as American Indian. Now this cannot be overlooked when you're addressed with the fact that this woman has consistently attempted to crowbar Native Americans into the reparations conversation. Why is that? Because she knows if I can successfully crowbar Native Americans into the reparations conversation and dilute the resources that should go specifically to American descendant of slaves to now go to, yeah, some American descendant of slaves, but also Native Americans, well, guess who would also benefit from that? Elizabeth Warren, and not just her as an individual, but a host of other white Americans that are classified as Native Americans because their ancestors were able to buy themselves onto the Dawes Grolls back in the 1800s. And that's why it is so important to continue to classify yourself as an American descendant of slaves when discussing politics or ADOS foundational black American so that way you can effectively box out other groups from taking advantage of legislation and policies that should be exclusively for you. When we say tangibles 2020, no tangibles, no vote, I mean that with every fiber of my being. And it's not just 2020, it's 2024, 2028, and beyond. Don't come to me talking about reparations for American descendant of slaves and Native Americans. Miss me with that. Come back next election with some tangibles. But you can miss me with all that Native Americans, American descendant of slaves, reparation mix up. Because if you cave in the nonsense like that, what happens is that you will find yourself as an American descendant of slave in the back of the line holding your plate, waiting for your slice of the American pie just to never get it. That's how these policies always work. Native Americans will benefit from reparations. White people that are classified as Native Americans will benefit from reparations. But you will not. You won't get any of that. And with all that being said, I ain't got no more talking. I'm your boy Tony DeLarry. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I drop a new video. And like I always say, most importantly to me, make sure you text TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That's TD Hip Hop to number 33222 so that you can get a direct text notification whenever I drop a new video. That means more to me than you hitting the subscribe button. And for those of you who want to support on the financial side, like I say in all my videos, I do need help with um, ad funding. So if you want to support on that level, you can also cash at me. Uh, my cash app name is dollar sign TD Hip Hop. And I'll leave the link in the description for you below as well. So even if you don't have the cash app app on your phone, you could hit that link and you would just offer up your donation in the same manner that you'd pay for something on Amazon.com. So anyways, I ain't got no more talking. I'm out of here, man. Deuces. These people are wicked. <laughs> These people are so wicked with their deception.